Hello. Hey, Mark, how are you doing? Oh, good. I'm trying to figure out how to two time the meetings now. It's going to be ugly. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is going to be a short meeting today. I don't think we have anything on the agenda. Hi, everyone. Hi, Brandon. Hey, Brandon. All right, I'm going to post the meeting notes in here. So go ahead and fill in attendance. Um, I think that this meeting today should be a pretty short one. We don't have anything much on the agenda. Um, so I think what we're going to do is we are going to just do check-ins. I think I see a couple possibly new people here, so we can do um, some introductions. And then we just kind of just go around, talk about a couple of things. Uh, Magna, do you have uh do you wanna put down um a quick announcement of the block? Is it out yet? Uh sorry. Uh I don't know. It should be. <laughs> uh um I was away, so it should be released at eight PM PT and eleven eleven AM EDT, I think. Oh it's eight PM. Okay, I thought it was eight AM for some reason. Uh, it's, oh, it's uh, out. It's out. Yeah. It's it's out. I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah. It's a m. Yeah. 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 Oh, let me see. And thanks, Matt, for helping to swipe. So yeah, let's. I'm gonna start off with kind of just going around. Um, before that, just um the usual. You know, this is a recorded meeting. Um, it's um, covered by CNCF, so the usual CNCF conduct guidelines apply. Um, all right. So just going around. Let's see. Um, no updates. Uh, Marlo, you have a question about SMI. Sorry, I was finding my mute button. Yeah, so summarily, I've been going to the SMI community meetings, which also coincide with these ones. So I'm here every other week. And uh, their meetings, um, they were, so SMI is service mesh interface. And the reason that they're interesting is that 
everyone is running their own service meshes and Istio seems to be riveted in various places. And if you're trying to run a particular version of Istio, you often can't because it's riveted to various products. And so I've been pushing for SMI uh, in Kubeflow, but when I went and looked at the SMI app adapter, it was version 131, which is not the current Istio. Um, so Kubeflow is currently updating to 1.9 and the SMI community is updating to their adapter to 1.9, which makes it easier to do that sort of port and potentially run whatever the service mesh you wanna run on. But there's still the authentication piece that Istio has. So SMI has a new Jira ticket open and I, I don't really know where the community to ask. I've put in chat um, where they're trying to figure out what the interest is in separating out the uh, security part of Istio or a service mesh versus the functionality. So if anyone would like to go and add things to the ticket or express interest, that would be helpful, especially since I would like to see those two pieces separated. Just a quick clarification, is this SMI uh, working group a CNCF working group or is it a separate? It is a CNCF working group okay. and it's SMI-IO. It was initially being pushed with Linkerd, their interest fell off. Um, so the majority of the people currently working there are open service mesh. Okay, um, so you're specifically looking for authentication um, contributions, right? You were saying? Either contributions or to help them uh, go forward with this particular GitHub issue on what they're supposed to do there. And part of it is they don't really know how because they're not security people. <laughs> so sure. they don't know what that looks like. Yeah, I see a couple of mentions of Spiffy. Um, Spiffy Spy, I think quite a few people within our community are involved with that. So. Yeah, and um, they currently do not work with Spiffy Inspire, the SMI. So if we want that there, uh, there needs to be a little bit of work. Okay, um, I think we usually have a couple of folks on the call that are involved with Spiffy Inspire. Um, I think what what I can do is maybe I'll tag a couple of them on the, on the issue and then they can kind of follow up there as well. And Brandon, things. I'm interested in working on that, so I'll add stuff to GitHub as well. Awesome. All right, and if you know anyone interested also uh, on other service meshes that are interested in contributing, that would also be useful because I, I don't want it to become an echo chamber. Awesome. Thanks, Marlon. Uh, let's see. Next up, uh, Martin. You want to talk about issue 256? Uh, yes, but first a little context. So I have been looking into uh, security, uh, security access working group and the issues that uh, the working group has created. And one of them was about getting more reviews for security assessments. Uh, and when I read it, uh, I just remember the one old issue that was that seems to be closed when because I had a, a period, a couple of months when I, I was not able to attend on the meetings. And I just wanted to, you know, to bring the discussion on the table and to hear, uh, to hear the opinion of the different people here. So the issue is about the idea to have a more, how can I say, more low level role into the assessments. And my idea was to, uh, to be able to advertise the security assessments towards more um, um, junior developers and people who maybe, I'm not sure if there, are, if there are any in the group or uh, if there are people who are new to security in this group, I'm not sure. And that was my, one of my assumptions that I don't know uh, how, how many, how experienced, and who joins the, who joins the meetings. But my idea was to uh, somehow make it more uh, accessible to people with um, maybe no or a little uh, security experience. And um, as I see it as a way to, uh, a way to 
um, get more people involved in, in the security assessments. And of course, uh, I, called, I called this role something like a trainee or I don't know if you should call it uh, intern or something, but the idea is to have someone, my idea was to have someone from the other reviewers who is willing to, to answer your questions if you have more questions. Because when you don't know many, uh, much about security, you will need to ask somebody who is more knowledgeable. And I, I expect, I, I, yeah, I, I expect that this role will be something like, it's, it's an optional role. And if somebody wants to volunteer in that role, you should find a sponsor, you should find a mentor who is willing to help you in the assessment. And if there is somebody who is taking that responsibility, then you can be, become a trainee or something. And after you have uh, successfully finished a couple of those, or I don't know how one or two, uh, you can even, uh, yeah, you can join uh, as a full, yeah, as a full reviewer. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's um, I see you've already also posted inside the issue 447, uh, which is about getting new reviewers. Um, I think we, we kind of talked about a little bit about this a while back, like you said. Um, and I don't think we, we've had kind of, we, we had a couple of people just like, uh, what we did last time was we said, okay, here's a review channel, you know, you can, you can stick your head in, you can like listen to the meetings if you're not participating, but at least, you know, kind of see how it goes. Um, it sounds like what you are proposing is something a bit more directed kind of uh, a cross section of mentorship and also maybe some resources as well. Yeah, I mean, I don't expect to, yeah, it will be useful to, to have somebody to point you to the resources because to the right resources. Right. Um, I, as I said, I, I bring this up because I know it, it was uh, discussed a while back, but again, I didn't have the opportunity to join them for a while. Is this something that um, you think that um, you'd be able to kind of propose? Like if a proposal is say like, maybe we have a mentor role and then observer role. Um, uh, well, yeah, but the issue is closed. And I just want to hear others opinion before from proposing that. I mean, that was my idea because I looked back into the discussion uh, when on the meeting when it was closed, and I think it was done. Uh, uh, yeah, no, one of the uh, uh, six chairs uh, had uh, mentioned that uh, probably it's better to um, it's better to promote joining as a regular reviewer instead of joining as an observer or trainee or how however we are going to call it. But my point is, because we don't know how experienced developers are here on this channel, there could be really, uh, on, on each of the reviews, there could, be, uh, um, there could be developers who are experienced and don't, I mean, are know, know what they're doing, but also you, don't, you, you can end up in the situation when you have a couple of trainees, let's say, or a couple of people who, don't, who are not actually knowledgeable enough and that will be a way. This role will be will, this role will be a way uh, to start as a little more. If we're not sure, just to start a little. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To, to be more to be more confident in what you're doing. To become more confident. Any comments, suggestions? I'll chime in because I was uh, on the on this ticket. <laughs> um, I, I I think you know initially the observer role and kind of internment was all kind of wrapped up into the notion of doing an assessment versus what we currently have as a review. I think as a review where we're essentially passively ingesting materials and then kind of engaging in a, a conversation about the design. I don't think it. I don't think the skill bar is as high versus when you're engaging in an assessment you're, you're kind of naturally you know just human nature putting yourself in a more 
defensive position as the as the project. So you kind of want folks who can go tete a tete with the developers on particular issues, uh, whether they're you know friendly suggestions or or actual criticisms. I think that the skill requirements are higher. So I don't know if there's really a place for it in the new process for reviewing, because that to me seems like a more passive uh, role. Yeah, probably I had to I had to read a little bit more about the new process before, but yeah, I'll read more about the new process and see if there is a place for something like this or not. Thank you, Robert. I guess just to punctuate that, it, it should the, the bar for reviewers should allow pretty much anyone who has an interest to productively participate without any real training or mentorship, I guess is my point. So, so to also kind of add, add to that, um, I think a while ago we were talking about, um, you know, we had this issue where we had a bunch of different issues, we had a bunch of different things that required people, and then we had a bunch of new people that came in, and then we couldn't really, like, there wasn't, there, there isn't a good way for people to match, like, a lot of people come and like, what is that to work on, what should we do? Um, we were considering also, you know, we have a new member process where they'll fill out the forms to say, okay, are they experiencing security? Uh, what are they looking to do? And, you know, hopefully, you know, we can have a list of, of people from there and then we can say, okay, yeah, you should check out, you know, the be a security, maybe in this case, be a review or mentor, or be a, like be a um, observer in the review. Yep, I, I understand your point. And yeah, as I said, I will read uh, again the new process and familiarize myself with it. And we'll see, and we'll comment if I have something. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Um, so moving along, uh, next we have, I'm going to pronounce this wrong. Sladin, Nunes. Is that right? Yeah, it's Sladin. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Uh, so yeah, actually, I'm a new uh, contributor. I just um, you know checked out, I guess, uh, one of the messages on LinkedIn, and um, I'm I'm a bit involved with the Kubernetes community, um, you know, making pull requests, um, participating in release triages and stuff. And um, yeah, I hopped onto the SIG security, and you know, I'm finding my way um, through the good first issues. Um, I guess that was just a topic that was being discussed by Martin. Maybe um, maybe I can be a test subject for this. Uh, for this, you know, uh, this, this experiment. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to participate and attend meetings and maybe, uh, you know, contribute my way. Uh, yeah, so thanks. Awesome, welcome. All right, um, let's see. Okay, Magnell, do you wanna take the mic to talk about the blog post? Sure, yeah, no problem. So yeah, I added the blog post to, to the chat there. We just released it today, uh, just a few hours ago. This is the blog post announcing um, the Cloud Native Security Day, right, for, for the KubeCon EU uh, 2021. That's going to happen on May 4th um, this year. And we announced about that we're going to have a CTF and also that we're going to have a live stream during the CTF where we're going to invite some guest interviewers, right? So for example, here, uh, some names that are, are already confirmed are uh, Lise Rice, Brad Gisman, uh, Tabitha Sable, and uh, Rory McCooney and David McKay. So those are, are people that are knowledgeable about Kubernetes, cloud native and security. And we're going to invite them to talk about uh, the challenges during the CTF and how they would go about solving them and ask about any tools or anything that they would use to, uh, to solve those challenges without giving too much away. Um, so we already have that book during the, uh, during the event on, on the Twitch stream, on the Cloud Native uh, Foundation stream on Twitch. And we have two separate time slots that we're gonna do that. And yeah, at the end, I just mentioned about the, the, the prize that we, we got from uh, DevSecCon, right? About the SIG security, team and everything 
uh, that that uh, Brendan has a picture there holding the the prize. Do you, do you have the trophy there, Brendan? Yeah, one second. Let me let me go grab okay. it. <laughs> yeah, sure. I, I would like to see it. Um, but, but yeah, so that that's what we have for for now. And I think Andy has some updates for the CTF as well. Oh, nice. Looks pretty. It's my fingerprints all over it. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's, it's really heavy. It was like, mm -hmm. uh, I think this thing's like two pounds or something. Oh, okay. So yeah, we're working on the challenge and I'll let Andy talk about that. Awesome. Um, so, so, yeah, since we're talking about this, maybe uh, we'll we'll come back to you, Robert, later for the for the Tata Studio. Uh, Andy, do you wanna talk about CTF? Yeah, sure thing. Thanks, Magno. Uh, yeah, congratulations on the uh, the Six Security Prize as well. Testament to all the effort that a lot of people put in. So good work. Uh, yeah, the um, we're well underway with preparation. Um, we have. Uh, a little bit of marketing blurb to give you a taster, delve deeper into the dark and mysterious world of Kubernetes security. Exploit a supply chain attack, of course, and start your journey deep inside the target infrastructure. Exploit your position to hunt and collect the flags and hopefully learn something new and wryly amusing along the way. So we have a theme where the we're modeling it on what's happened, of course, in, uh, in the major kind of internet melting security problems we've seen in the last four or so months. But we're still in the weeds of defining these scenarios. So if anybody has something that they think would be a great learning outcome for attendees or that they think is a particularly difficult thing to do, because really the scope here is all the way from beginners, we look, I guess the second part of the marketing blurb is uh, everybody is welcome from beginner to hardened veteran. And really, we want a learning path taking people from relatively easy stuff at the beginning that's maybe self-evident through to something at the end that is a uh, piece de resistance kind of territory. So welcome any contribution if anybody has something in particular that they think would be useful. And uh, yeah, please do, uh, please do join the day as well if you want to play on, uh, on the 4th of May. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Andy. All right, um, and Robert, do you want to talk about Cloud Custodian review? Yeah, and I think I see uh, Capil is on, so he can he can jump in as well. So, uh, Custodian is now re-engaged in finishing what started under the assessment uh, framework. So, I guess the question is, they've done a ton of work putting together the the their document under that initial framework. Are we now under the new framework, where, what kind of a reset do we need to do? Um, and then, you know, we, we would need a couple more reviewers because all the folks who were available uh, last year are, are, you know, may or may not be available. So we need some additional reviewers to sign on. So Brandon, from a, from a, what is your suggestion on next step for, for them? So um, how many reviewers are there do you have signed up right now? Well, right now, as far as I know, it's just me <laughs> because they, <laughs> they just re-engaged uh, last week or well, a couple of weeks ago, Liz uh, on the custodian side started reviewing the Google doc from uh, 2020. So uh, in the last couple of weeks, they've, they've finished reviewing that Google doc, but uh, all of the commitments we had on the ticket go back to you know July of last year. So I'm presuming, I you know nobody is currently actively signed on as a reviewer. Um, but if anybody on this call who was signed on just wants to you know chime in and say yes, they're still on, or comment on the ticket, either way. Yeah, I think um, can you can you paste the link to the the ticket again in the chat um, so that folks on this call can take a look at it. Uh, but yeah, I think this may be also a good opportunity to kind of, um, you know, for those that are new and want to check it out. Um, usually we have maybe three to four reviewers, um, but, you know, depending on the amount of interest that we get, you know, we'll, maybe we can, we can test out some of this new uh, learning systems that, that we want to 
take a look at it as well. Well, this should be a good one for, for those who are interested to start because Capil and TM have done a really thorough job on their kind of self-assessment Google Doc. Uh, so it's got a lot of detail in there. It's been, been thoroughly reviewed by uh, other folks initially. So I think uh, Justin was on a couple of calls with Capil and myself early on. So it's, it's a fairly mature document at this point. All right, I'm gonna also mock that. Um the one um, the the issue is um, you know needs help and then we can so one thing that I think would be something that you could do is um, try and send the six security mailing list um, an email we got quite a lot of response from that where we did it for the white paper and the, the security map so that could be a place to to try and reach out okay we'll do yeah. And so just so I understand the new process, uh, really the next step is we just need to translate their self-assessment doc into the markdown document that, that you guys had defined. Is that correct? Yep. I think there shouldn't be that much. It's, it's I think it's more of a renaming um, of sections and then there's like one or two sections which are in addition to that, but I think other than that, I don't think there's too much that should be changed. Okay. Yep. Um, if it's too, if you find that it's too much work, I think it's because this is kind of like the transition process, like this was defined before. Um, I think it would be fine to use the old template as well. But if you can use a new one, that would be that would be better. But if it's too much effort, then don't worry about it. Okay, I, I think that's probably just a function of how many volunteers we get. And if we can <laughs> break it up into small enough parts, it should, hopefully it won't be too much. There's again, I think all of the source material that we need is there for sure. Um, like I said, they've done a good job on the custodian side, giving us lots of good data. So now it's just massaging it into this new format. Okay, I think that was awesome. Um, thanks, Robert. And last of all, we have um, Frederick. Hello, I just wanted to make a minor mention in the CNCF talk mailing list. Uh, I, I put a link in the mailing in the uh, in the documents. Uh, but in short, uh, one of the things that we could help give guidance on for projects is how to help with vulnerability uh, with vulnerability. Uh, uh, metrics because what's in the pack what's happening is that many of the metrics they're using are uh, not really usable like saying here are all the vulnerabilities of kubernetes since the start of time versus here's how many we've discovered in a given period of time here's how many we fixed in a given period of time um, and the general state of, of health uh, would be useful but even that still misses the mark so it would be good to get a few people who are uh, experienced in how to um, and, and how to set up this messaging so that we could make sure that the information that is relevant uh, and, and useful for developers gets pushed out, but also in a way that doesn't make it look to the community that things are much more dire than they than they actually are. So I, I put a link to the mailing thread or to the mailing list thread, uh, or specifically to the message that they called it out uh, from from Liz Rice. But there's a whole thread there that. Uh, that's been going on for a little while that would be good to get some people to weigh in on. Um, other than that, just wanted to raise that. Awesome. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting topic of discussion. Um, I think we had Subra also come a couple of weeks back to talk about the, 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 the new system. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this is an, a general thing about vulnerability management across the board, right? I mean, I hold my hands up here. I work for Snake. And that that vulnerability data is coming from us. I've seen that thread. I don't really want to wade into it because it's like full of controversy. And but but also, you know, some of that some of that stuff is, is presentational to do with how the Linux Foundation is consuming the data coming back from Snake. Um, so yeah, yeah, um, like like the information I think is good. Like we need to have more of this type of information out, but I think there's two, there's multiple audiences. And so I think if we were to have some guidance that we can present to projects, like 
here's how you tell your developers that, as to how the stats are. Like we're seeing more vulnerabilities come in. Best case scenario, you could link them to actual commits, uh, though I don't know how feasible that is. But uh, but at the same time, here's how you message to your community as to actual actual impact, and here's a mitigation to the, to the impact, and to get that transparency there. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're if you're consuming sneak, you know, it, through the sneak UI, you get a whole bunch more um, uh, remediation stuff in there right and and you get a, a lot more detail on the uh on the prioritization stuff um i have to say i haven't looked too much about the, uh, uh, what the how the linux foundation stuff is is presenting it other than following that that thread i know there are also discussions going on between uh the linux foundation and us about uh how they could better present that data Yeah, and so, um, if yeah, and, and it's, it's just guidance. It, I think is the primary thing. Like, there's there's no perfect answer. So, anything that can help them towards not only better messaging but also more meaningful data, because like it's it's clear there's some very rich data that's there, and if it's locked away and and behind poorly designed, and I'm not suggesting you guys are the guys who designed the uh, the actual metrics that the presentation of the metrics is just. Uh, a poorly designed presentation of the metrics can sometimes be worse than than yeah yeah uh, I mean, presenting and, and the I metrics. Think Snake's position is that we would agree with that. You know, I mean, we haven't we're we're not in in uh, it's consuming us downstream. So yeah, exactly. So if yeah, if you have any resources or anything like that, you can point towards this to say, hey, here's some recommendations on ways you can get more meaningful input. Because at the end of the day, metrics are about uh, changing behaviors and uh, they can change them positively and negatively. And what I worry about is that this, this type, the, the current setup may have more negative impact than positive impact and is not actionable. And if they can get down to the point where they're actionable uh, or um, per, and, and helps tell the story in a more clear way. Like if we're seeing like over time, that we're seeing more vulnerabilities that are directly like the, that the code scanner itself is catching in the actual commits then this this tells a story and there's multiple interpretations of it but it's more detailed than you know we're flying blind and versus uh the current set of metrics which it's it's hard to tell how how use, how useful they are so anyways yeah just wanted to make sure that this is something that we can get some people to possibly, if, if it's in something you're all interested in, that we can, it's an area that I think we can, we can provide it with a little bit of effort, provide some decent uh, uh, guidance that helps move the needle towards a, a better place. Cool. Um, sorry, just quick logistics. Around now, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, Brandon. Yeah, I, I messaged you on Slack. I actually have to have to drop. Can you, can you take over for facilitation? Sure, one second. Sorry, I, I have to drop my agenda. But okay, no worries. Continue the discussion. <laughs> Sorry about this. No worries. I'll take it. Thank you, Ren. So we can continue, folks. Um, any other comments on the vulnerabilities and metrics? Hello, can you guys hear me? Yeah. I, I think the lack yes. of, uh, of answer is uh, the answer. Thank you. Okay, um, how do we, uh, are there any actions on this vulnerability conversation that we need to take up as a team? I mean, if people want to have a conversation, I'm happy to, to jump in. Um, I, I think it's uh, vulnerability management and assessment is 
not a dark art, but it's certainly um, it's a difficult job because it requires so much knowledge of, of what those security things are. And um, yeah, I, I'm happy to jump in and kind of provide a perspective if, uh, if that's a conversation we want to have. So should we set up an offline conversation, like a small working group to talk about vulnerability management then? Is that the action? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll make a note of that. Okay, I'm, um, I'm happy to take part in that in that discussion from a uh, sneak perspective. Sure, Matt, I'll include you. Um, I don't know who yes. was described um, earlier, um, who was taking notes. Me. Okay, <laughs> we can add that to the notes. That'd be great. If you, if you'd like to add me as well, I'd be happy to to provide um, information from a uh, consumer's perspective as well. Uh, this is uh, Frederick Counts, K-A-U-T-Z. Uh, I, on. I, I can help as well. Uh, one. <laughs> Hang on, wait a second. I need to catch up here. No problem. Who, um, I'm so adding the names here, there? so you can get those from there. Who have we got Magno, Andrew, yep. we volunteering there? Oh. Andrew, Frederick. Yeah. Great, we went from no one to a good eight, nine individuals. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a pretty good sized uh, small working group and there could be some good deliverable that can come out of that, that we can publish as well, so. Yeah. Matt, I also uh, just put a note on that on the chat. If you can add me as well, that'd be great. Yeah, I'm getting there. I'm just catching up. Wait a second. <laughs> Appreciate it. And Rory. Yeah. Right. I think I've captured everyone there. Wonderful. And do we need to create an issue for this? Um, I think it'll be good to have an issue so we can track progress. Um, so I'll create an issue. Um, so um, do we have any other topics for today to discuss? Anyone has any additional comments or Agenda items. This is by him. I, I did have a, a, a question. So I was trying to finish up going through the, the native security map vanilla document. Um, and I noticed, I mean, so it's, it's trivial, I think, but I, I want to just bring it up to see what other uh, individuals' thoughts are. So um, as, I was, as I was going through the document, I noticed there's a slight flow uh, break uh, on the topics. So as an example, I noticed how we have static code analysis and DAS, uh, some are very further down in the list. I think as part of, uh, I think it was part of distribution even, um, I'm just trying to recall, but it was after you know building an image. Um, and I was just wondering, should we have it more tailored towards what a, what a normal pipeline would be? So when, a, when an individual reading this, they understand at what junction they should introduce a static code analysis and DAS versus you know, you now have an image, you now have a manifest, you know, all the different stages and, and just to make it a little bit better aligned. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, but um, as you're aware, we are doing a retrospective right now and we are gathering feedback on how, what we can improve in the paper. So if you would like to send that feedback to um, the person who's gathering it, I, I, Pushkar uh, Joglekar is his name. Um, I can put his name here. Sure, um, yeah. He's gathering the feedback. So if you provide the feedback, then I think in the next version, we can take that up okay, uh, so. and update the paper uh, because there's more work to be done. Obviously, that sure. was done in a very short timeline and we just published the paper because we wanted to announce that at the KubeCon and have something out there. But of course, there's cloud native security. You can write books on it, right? 
So mm -hmm. there's a lot of <laughs> lot of scope for improvement there. Um, so th there is a blog post as well, and there's a survey being sent out um, by Pushkar, who will be gathering all the feedback, and then we can consolidate all the feedback and release the next version uh, when we have all the updates up. Okay, in there. thank you. No worries at all. Any other topics that we want to bring up today? Sorry, I kind of had to jump in, so I'm not very prepared with the <laughs> agenda items, um, but I thought we had very small agenda today, but the conversation was great. Um, so thank you all for attending today. If you don't have any other items to address and we'll talk to you next week. Thank, thank you. you. Have a great thank day. You. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone.